Hi, this is Brian B. Barrett with Bar YU, and uh, I'm here with Professor Clower, Dr. Clower, and he's uh, told me that today we're going to be talking about having your cattle respect you. R E S P E C T C O W for the peeps like me. So, Barry. We're here this morning, and you said earlier, today's episode is about having your cattle respect you. Yes. Correct. All right, explain that. Yes. Well, uh, it's just like me with people. When I approach them, I make uh -huh. eye contact, shake their hand. If they don't really make that eye contact and kind of, you know, a little bit hesitant about shaking, well, you know, they don't have any respect for you, or, or, or maybe they don't know you, or maybe they don't trust you. Okay. And that's so what... So cattle are the same way. Absolutely. And if you don't approach them that way, you can get yourself in trouble. And mm. so I learned a long time ago, been doing this over 30 years, and that doesn't make me a professional, but it makes me know what not to do. Yeah. And the minute that I, I see those cattle are not doing what I'm, my goal, you know, they can't read my mind, but I can read theirs. Uh, by by their actions. The head turns them and the rear end drives them. And so if their head is coming to yeah. me, I've got their respect. If it's going away from me, then they're disrespecting me, especially if I'm a foot, you know. And uh, if they're not doing what I need them to do, okay, then obviously I'm doing the wrong thing. Not the cow's not doing the wrong thing, mm -hmm. I'm doing the wrong thing. And so I want to set my cattle up to succeed. When I call these cattle in to feed, I want them to come. If they don't, then they, they're disrespecting what I'm trying to do to them and for them. And so that's kind of like you and I working together. If I'm asking you to work with me and you just keep uh, doing your own thing and not helping me or, or, or vice versa, you know, you want me sure. to help you and I'm not doing it, then we're disrespecting basically what each right. other's thoughts are. No, right. I want to show you my way. And so when a cow says, okay, I'm going to show you my way, what I'm going to do, She's disrespecting me, and then so I have to pick up the tools of the trade to get regain that that okay. respect. Okay. All right. So what are we doing now? Okay, I've got to uh, see if I've got these cattle enough of their respect to get them in this pen, and so that's uh, so we can do our, our sorting and our working that we need to do today. All right. Well, Barry, we have the cattle. I should say you got the cattle uh, into the pen here with uh, help from what's the dog's name? Uh, Rome. From Rome, yeah, okay. Yeah, sack of, half a sack of feed, one dog. So half a sack of feed, one dog. You just got to use what you got to use. Yeah, and they're in here. Yeah. Uh, you talked earlier about them respecting uh, us. Right. What What's the next thing we're about to do yeah. here? Is it something that a lot of folks with yes with yes. cattle have to do? It's fall time of year, and a lot of times you uh, you wean your calves off. That means right. that they're too big to stay with the mama anymore, and it's time to wean. And that's what we need to do today. We need to wean these. Uh, three head, I got two heifers in the steer we need to pull off. And right. uh, so that's why we got them in the pen today. Uh, and uh, we're just going to see how well they respect us. As we're we, just going to walk around and, and try and well, we, get them out of here, those three. We could try that. We, we could try that. <laughs> we could try that. <laughs> well, yes. Many, so, many people have a, have this scenario to where they, they don't have any other way than be afoot in their cattle. Okay. Some cattle respect that. Uh, they probably have a smaller pen and cattle that respect an individual on a foot. Uh, so these cattle okay. necessarily were in a little bit larger pen yeah. uh, to get all of them in here. They have horns and they don't necessarily always respect somebody a foot. Well, that's encouraging. What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna sort these cattle. Okay. All right, well, I'll give it a shot. You just uh, let me know what I need to do. All right, well, we'll ease this away then. And uh, I guess uh, we will try the foot if you want to. Well, I, I thought that's what you wanted, but uh, I just like the word respect at this point. All right. So we're trying to get them in which direction? We're trying well, to we want that big bull with horns and all those donkeys and the big heifer with our high head sticking up straight up, showing me that she doesn't respect me. Red. Out this gate right here. Big so, bull back there and yeah. red. And yeah. which other ones? So. Uh, and the donkeys. Yep. Okay. That's pretty much. You think you can get that done? I had a great Uncle Harris that had a three-legged beagle, and that three-legged beagle respected him. <laughs> What's that? Here's a dude with the price of eggs. I tell you what. Here's you know, it always worked for him. And Uncle Harris. 
Uncle what are you Harris? doing? <laughs> he, listen, this is how he would do it. Okay, well, I'm... Get out of here! <laughs> I don't Get out of here! Sir, so, we almost had the the ones sorted off that we needed, they were sorting themselves, and now what are you doing? Are you saying this ain't working? No, I see, see now you've got all the cattle that I wanted to keep in the pen coming towards the gate. <laughs> so you're obviously... <laughs> Man, Uncle Harris was a wise R -E -S -E person too. R-E-S-E-P-T. I don't think you get so no respect <laughs> from me is what the cow said. So what you're saying is that approach does not necessarily work. Waving no. and flailing. Since we've walked in this pen, I haven't heard one of these animals say a word. Okay. You got a point. And that didn't make us nervous, right? Right. So what we've got right now is we're gonna do the same thing. We're not gonna say a word. They don't understand English. They understand movement. Movement. When those cattle move away from one another, it's because another one's moving towards them. Right. The head turns and the butt drives. So that's what you need to understand. Like walk towards that calf. Uh-huh. Okay, now you've got her head turned. Step over to where you're walking right behind her. See that? Step on up if you want them to turn. Right. And you step back if you don't want them to. The closer you get to them, okay, the more nervous they get and right. the more they're wanting to flee. That bull doesn't look very nervous. So, no, he's not. And she's not nervous. <laughs> so, what, uh, what we've got. That have been an issue, huh? Exactly. And so, the bull is calm and gentle but he's got his face. Now he's talking. Now he's living. And what I understand is he's either wanting to eat, uh -huh. okay, he's wanting to breed, or he's wanting out of the pen. He's wanting to leave. Where's I don't want him side? to eat me. I don't want him to breed me, so we're gonna let him out of the pen. How's that sound? And for our next episode, folks, getting to know your cattle personally. And having respect. <laughs> so Barry, this is a real scenario. Yes, sir. For many people because yep. they have to do this on foot and that's because yep. they don't have a horse they they don't have any other way to do it and now so, there may be some people that hear that yep. that and kind of go what do you mean you got you know you got all this livestock but no yep. horse but that really yep. is the reality yep. in, in many small ranches yes. i guess and, and, and I've, I've paid for the sub makers and the rock home that we're able to live in off of the people that do not have horses <laughs> uh, that does not make them ignorant by any means. Sure. It makes them, uh, they're doing their job in town. They turn out six to ten head somewhere on their property. Sure. For, for whether it's for ag exemption or for raising their own beef or whatever. Right, right. And they have no pens. And so I take these portable panels to their facilities and I can either feed them in those pens like I did this morning or I can take a horse, uh, my dogs, and uh, whatever methods that I need, the tools that I have. And the methods that I've developed, or the cows have taught me to develop. I just right. want to, I just want to make it work. I want to, I want to set these cattle up to succeed, not fail. And so that's why, uh, shoot, we put on ranch rodeos all over the country where there's four or five people horseback. Uh, we we actually put on a rodeo each year uh, in and the spring and the fall that that we do these sorting events uh -huh. and roping events afoot because there's like so I just many did. people. Yes, there's so many people in this area. A, a horseless rodeo. A horseless rodeo, yes. <laughs> not, not the headless horseman, but the horseless headman. I guess it's practical. <laughs> if you're gonna be doing this all the time, yeah. that would make sense to the, have the, a rodeo The with. key to making it successful on a foot is having your cattle that respect you a foot, mm -hmm. which some of these cattle don't. So we're not really gonna attempt anything with them a foot much, okay. other than feeding them and gaining their respect of feeding them. Uh, the, the other scenario is, is the individual has cattle that respect them a foot and then they have a smaller pen that is set up to not have to cover as much ground. Because if you're horseback, you can cover a lot of, of uh, distance from, from one gate to sure, the next. that makes sense. And, it not, and it's not stirring up the cattle. But like if, like if you had to leave that gate and run over to this gate, you couldn't walk and get there in time like right. you could on a horse. To be able to sort them out it. But if you turn your cap around backwards and run like a squalling maniac, well then the cattle's gonna run. <laughs> They're gonna run. <laughs> so if we can keep from stirring them up any, any more than they already are, and like right. this particular heifer, she's prepared to get out. She, she knows mm -hmm. that's just her nature. Uh, and so that's why uh, we're just gonna respect her wishes and say, okay, you don't respect me a foot, 
that's putting me in harm's way, and that's putting her in harm's way. And what about me, too? Uh, you and forgot. Yes, we definitely important. don't yeah. want to put Brian in harm's way, yeah. for sure. Brian so, thinks so. That, <laughs> that's exactly right. We just did some things on foot, Yes. and you're mentioning now that if you have a horse, yep. it's a different, kind of a different game. Correct, correct. All right. So at this time, to save uh, wear and tear on the cattle, and you and me, I'm going to mm -hmm. go get my horse. Okay. How's that sound? All right. All right. I just want to kind of quietly let these cattle stand. And as they turn their heads away, I'm going to allow the donkeys to go out. My goal here is to what, stare at what I want out the gate. That'll do. Now get out. I've got some really good dogs. They know when they smell a cow, they're supposed to be barking. And when they hear that extra loud noise, they're supposed to get quiet. So maybe that'll help out. If I was in a hurry, I would not attempt this. That's 99.999% of the time the reason people have trouble with cattle. A cow is a female. Being married 30 years, I have discovered that if it's their ideal, it works a whole lot better. Or at least let them think it's their ideal. So what I want is to let these cattle think what I'm asking them to do is their ideal. Ease around here. And I'm staring at the red heifer and the big black bull. There's no way I could have made that move afoot and kept those cattle that calm and gentle. So I'm allowing these that kind of want to go to go. Now, Brian, I don't think there's any way I could have got that done and these cattle still be this calm. And now they're looking at me, looking at the horse, and it's because I'm up above them. I'm not eye level with them. Right. Uh, and there's no way I could get from point A to point B as quick as I did a foot as I could as, as old 3030 here. Uh -huh. He's a seven year old Gillen that we've had ever since he was about two and, and just trained him to do this. He's become my legs is what it amounts to. And that's what makes a horse and, and he's following my head and that's what makes a horse a good horse is when I focus at where I want to go, I just point my head and I'm start walking with my feet I'm, I'm, I'm moving these cattle where I want them to move. Yeah. And so right now we got the cattle out of the pen that we necessarily want to get out that are probably just a little bit fractious about you being afoot. And, uh, right. and she agreed, obviously. Yes, she did. So. Brian, so just a little bit of a recap. Did you see kind of what we were explaining or maybe that, that feeling that we had? Oh, yeah. Respect. Yeah. There was a lot of statements made uh, when the horse approached the, the cattle. Oh, they got quiet and said. stared. Yeah. With, 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 with just out. stared right at you. Yeah. I sat there and watched and I thought yeah. that was... Now, something amazing. I need to probably add right here, if I would have ran around on this horse like you did with your cat, you know, and running sure, around yeah. and, yeah. and uh, hooping and hollering, those cattle would have got just as stirred up. Right. And then what I, what happened, they would start losing respect. Mm -hmm. for my horse mm -hmm. and then when they've lost respect because a lot of my jobs that I get to go do they've already lost respect for every moving object huh okay and so I have to go in and that's when usually uh, the dogs that have been blessed with and been able to train they go and take a hold of them because they have to respect those dogs 
and then they come to me and I'm quiet and calm, then they respect me. And also I'm respecting them by not getting in their space until I needed to. You right. know, I allowed them to kind of develop some separation, reading those cattle, knowing that the head is past me. So if I ride towards the, the hind end, it's going to go. Right. If, the, if the head's in front of me and I step over, it's going to turn them. And, so, Even, and when you're walking, so it's yep, uh, same techniques same. when you're walking. Just Doesn't be aware change. that your cattle uh, exactly. are going to respect something. That's exactly right. Yeah, great. That's exactly right. Cattle and respect. Having your cattle respect you. Bar Y U, Dr. Clower.